Tanner has been a Toastmaster for six months, and he will be giving us his Toastmaster speech number five, Your Body Speaks from the Competent Communicator Manual. This five to seven minute speech is titled Significant Life Events. Yes. Please welcome me in joining Mr. David Tanner. Mr. Toastmaster, Toastmaster friends and guests. Today my speech will be significant life events A. Because in the future there will be a B and a C. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a D. Okay. A. <laughs> Many times in our lives, you know, we have events that change, alter or form our perception of life. I have many of, of them, but I will share with you a few. I also think that th my events have shaped the way that I think life should be. Event number one, I call it on fire. When I was a little boy, about four or five years ago, years old, I was playing with matches. And I remember my brother had a shirt like this and he was going like this with the match. And I did it too, but I kept it right there. I saw it turn brown and start smoking, but then it burst out in flames, and I was, you know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden it started getting hotter and hotter, and I ran from the kitchen into the living room where my mother was. By this time, the heat was up to here, and you know, I could feel all the heat. And she saw me, she grabbed me, and threw me down, and petted all the fire out, and I remember her, her um, tears hitting my face because she was crying over me. Um, that night, or some time after that, I remember seeing a man on my bed. It was like I was in a dream. And this man was in white. And this man asked me if I loved him. And as a little boy, I was running around, and I said yes. And that's all I remember, which leads me to the second event. The second event was when I was in the Marine Corps and I had learned to body surf very well. Uh, one night uh, when I was body surfing at the beach, there was big waves, cross current, undertow. But as a Marine, I'm not scared. So I'm out there body surfing, body surfing. And uh, this one wave left abruptly, which left me on my knees. And I was, <laughs> <laughs> when I let that last breath out, a huge wave hit me from the back, just tumbled me around, and I had my eyes closed, and I was fighting, fighting, just trying to get out, just like that, and uh, fighting with all my might. And while I was fighting, I heard this voice speak to me underwater, and that voice said, stop, <laughs> just like that. And, and I, I froze, and all the fear and the panic left and I was real calm. Then I felt my body moving like this, and I knew that was forward and backwards, but I still didn't know which way was up or down, so I was feeling like this, and I hit the ground right here. So I understood that I was upside down, being pulled back in the undertow. So I kicked off the bottom, <laughs> broke the surface, <laughs> and I turned back, and I saw the next wave coming in, and I caught a little bit of it, and my toes hit the bottom, and I ran out from the water onto the shore. Everything was gray. I was gray, the ground, the sky was light gray, and the color came back real slow, just like that, and the sky turned back blue. I was okay. I talked to the lifeguard about that, and he says, it's called gray out. When your brain has used most of the oxygen in the blood, your brain starts shutting down functions that it really doesn't need, and color is one of those functions. That leads me to event three. I call it the mission. Uh, when I grew up, I didn't have a close-knit family. And my siblings and I are not really close because of that. Um, and if you had to find something out, you heard it through the grapevine. I was talking to my aunt on the phone one day, and she was talking, she said, and your sister Debbie will be all right. And I went, what? Uh, you didn't know? Know what? Uh, well, she's having problems, and 
she took an overdose of sleeping pills. And that moment, something came over me, and that voice said, you are going to have to go talk to her because she'll listen to you. I hopped on a plane, went to uh, Indiana, talked to my sister. I knew exactly what she was going through. I knew exactly what I had to say. Turned her life completely around 180 degrees. And on the way back, I was coming down Arrow Avenue, I remember, and there was a T, a road T. If I, I came to the road, and if I turned right, I would go back to the airport. But if I turned left, I would go to Fairview Park. And Fairview Park was a park that I used to play at when I was a little boy. So this urge said, go to Fairview Park. So I turned left, went to Fairview Park. And as soon as I pulled up into Fairview Park, I got out of the car and I started crying. Tears coming down my face. I saw the swings, the slide, the merry-go-round that I used to play on, and I touched each one of them. And I was saying, man, I remember this. I, I was playing on this when I was a little boy. And then another great urge came upon me. It said, you got to go further. So I got back in the car, and I went down the hill in Fairview Park, and there was the baseball diamond that I would play that when I was a little boy, a little baseball diamond. And I came to the fence, and I had my hands on the fence, and by this time, I was really crying. And I remember I said, oh, man, this was the baseball game that I used to play at. And I remember this triple play that I did. And I was sad because no one from my family or anybody was there to see me do this triple play. And, and as I had my hand on the fence, crying and crying and crying, this voice, it's, look up. And I looked up, and there was this album. It was an album in the sky. I mean, huge album. And in that album was a picture of me. It was not a two-dimensional picture. It was a three-dimensional picture, live. And I looked it, and I saw it, and that voice said one more time, uh, when you thought you were alone, I was with you. Mm. And I put my head down. I was still crying. And then when I looked back up, it was gone. And when that was gone, the feeling that was over me left, just dissipated. And I went, <laughs> and I did like this, and, you know. Got back in the car, I drove to the street, and took me back to the airport, and that was it. And I went, wow, you know, that was an event that changed my life. And in closing, life comes at you in many ways, many directions, and in many forms. Your job is to just live life the best way you can because you never know if you can make a difference in someone's life.